morning guys. I thought <laughs> I'm looking really weird. I've got no lipstick on because I thought I'd do it with you. I put on my Instagram stories. I asked you what you wanted to see on YouTube. And <laughs> literally it was just makeup and vlogs. So okay, I'm gonna share more makeup with you because I'm guessing you guys obviously want to see it. So I thought I'd just show you what I'm using bit like instead of doing a whole makeup tutorial basically show you each week a little bit of what I do so I'm gonna do my lips with you guys today I have a little hack um I get accused a lot of having like lots of filler in my lips and my cheeks and stuff and actually it's just all like little makeup tricks I've learned over the years so I've got a great hack for the lips um I've got foundation on them right now so you probably can't see but um Basically, I use my bronzer. My bronzer is just smashed everywhere. Lovely. But my number one tool in my makeup kit is earbuds. I literally just put my makeup on with them. I don't know why. I just find them really easy to work with. So, I'm literally going to my... God, I need a new bronzer. So, I get some bronzer. Let's use the Charlotte Tilbury mirror so you can see. Okay, that's better. <laughs> literally looks like I've got no lips. Um... So I go on the outside, I'm gonna try and do this so you can see at the same time. Okay, so I go around the outside with bronzer. So instead of a lip liner, first of all, I just go around and I go in a lot on the Cupid's bow. So it looks a bit weird, but then I like brush it out with blend it in so it's basically like contouring for the lips i'm such a creature of habit that i always just use the same makeup and i use the rimmel lip liner in the shade spice <laughs> always have to if you've been here for a while you'll know i've been using this for literally years and just outline the lips There's literally a guy outside my flat that looks like um, that guy from you, you know, the stalker killer. He's staring straight at me. <laughs> He's definitely staring straight at me. I've got blinds up as well. Okay, so we've got the outline. And I always use um, Pixie by Petra Unacho Lip. I, literally, if you've been here for a while, you'll know I've had this since the start of my YouTube channel. I need to try more. I'm a ma I have a special thing that I do with my lips. Um, so I'm a matte liquid lip girl at first. <laughs> Honestly, this building. I'll give you an update on the moving situation in a minute. Let me get my lips on first. So I don't, with, with matte liquid lip, I find like if it gets too cakey, it cracks and stuff. The key I find to matte liquid lip is to just use a little bit and kind of dab it on so it's like barely there so you just kind of get this color I'm just gonna have to ignore this building work guys it has literally been driving me insane insane so after i've done that i go back in i'm <laughs> can you tell that i really enjoyed art at school um so i go back into blended a little bit more And then that's the kind of list. So this is what I wear when I'm wearing a mask. Definitely good because it's non-transferable. Like this will stay on. Like oh, nothing. But um, once I arrive at a place, I have started loving it. It's this Dior colour. I'll leave all the things that I've linked down below. It's Dior Addict 744. And it's like a really glossy lip. I say again, I'm such a dabber. Like I use things very sparingly because I find if I put too much on my lips I in fact my whole face like I don't wear pri like I try and put takes me a long time <laughs> am I making any sense takes me a long time to do my makeup but I don't wear that much makeup I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to my makeup I go into like this trance of like oh <laughs> I can't explain it it's a really therapeutic process for me but I don't think I wear that much makeup but I um use each product very sparingly I think that's a key and like blend and I don't know so <laughs> this is this is how I do my lips and maybe next time we can do the eyes and the brows I'll just I'll choose one to do with you next time so all those products will be linked down below I think you can get them from ASOS the deal one you can't but like most of what I've used is just ASOS and this is 
sells them Marks and Spencer's, so I think it's I think it's only about tenner, something like that. So yeah, um, a bit of an update. What have I got to tell you guys? So I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so you don't see too much of my face. The flat situation, guys. So when this goes live, I'll probably be nearly moving. I am moving out this flat, and I know so many of you guys were like, "You've done it beautifully. Like, why are you moving? I don't understand." And to be honest, I have been so, not so unhappy, but like, I've not been happy in this flat. Um, it's largely to do with the pandemic. Um, so many things happened that just made it not a nice environment for me. Um, so I started six months of the start of this tenancy was a pandemic. I was locked in and it's a little bit far out from the center of London and it's the opposite side of London to my best friends. Um, like it takes me an hour to go see my best mate in King's Cross and I just felt really isolated during the pandemic. I don't think anyone will quite understand, unless you've done it, what living alone in a pandemic feels like. It was, I, like I spent a lot of time by myself and I was ill at the same time, like struggling with long COVID. So for me this flat had a really strange, like a strange association with it firstly. And then I had the burglar thing happen, and now every time I hear movement outside, it just makes me so on edge. Like, I have security cameras, and I am constantly on it, checking, like, it's usually, like, a fox or something, but, like, it just doesn't make me happy. Like, the burglar situation really freaked me out. And then the building work started, and it has been horrendous. Like, I can't explain it. Like, there's building work, and then there's building work. What you just heard today was really fine like it's got to an okay stage but for it i'd say for about four months of this tenancy it has been unbearable where i put clips in before i'll do a clip now <laughs> like the whole flat shakes and it gives me um i've really struggled with i'm gonna say it I don't know what it is, it's something to do with long COVID. I've really struggled with hives this year. Like it's a rash that breaks out when your cortisol levels are too high basically. So the building, the vibration of the building was setting off my cortisol levels. So I was in a constant fight or flight mode basically. And it was just, I've never suffered from anxiety before, but that state of alert was just making me ill. And I have been ill. For about 10 out of 12 months this year, I have obviously had long COVID and then when the build, I'm always ill with the building work. Um, as soon as it started again, I came down with a chest infection and then I got Omicron. So my body must be in a really weak state when the building work happens. And if it was just noise, I could deal with it, but they're literally drilling the floorboards and the building is made of metal. So it really intensely vibrates can't explain it, it's just been not a very nice environment. So I kind of felt, it's hard to explain, I feel really trapped in this flat and it made me realise like, yeah, it's the nicest flat that I've lived in. It's done to what I, my tastes and I, I've really done it lovely compared to all my other flats, but I've been the most unhappy. Um, so yeah, puts things into perspective basically. So long story short, I am putting all my stuff into storage. Um, if anyone's got any recommendations that people, I just want someone to come in, bubble wrap everything and take it and make it as smooth as possible. So I'm putting everything in storage. Um, so when I come back, I can just open up the storage, get all my furniture and pop it in a new flat. Um, I'm going to Paris, basically. <laughs> so middle of Feb, I leave this place and then I'm going to Tulum on a press trip. Um, so the last, for my birthday, I'm turning 34 in Mexico. I always like to go to Mexico for my birthday. It's happened before, I've turned 30 in Mexico. So the last week of February, I'm in Mexico. So I'm gonna move, I'm just gonna go chill at home for a week, spend some time with my family, go to Mexico, come back, um, and then I'm gonna go to Paris. My plan is to stay in Paris for a month, and then my plan, maybe a month to six weeks, depending on how I feel or what, I can get like I'm just gonna Airbnb it and then I'm gonna go to New York and do the same in New York and then hopefully by this summer I will come back with a fresh clear perspective I just needed to escape London to miss it like I love this city and it's always my home but like I don't know just the pandemics like made it seem really like even now like all the events that we used to go to all the parties like it's not really happening. It started to get back and it got taken away from us again. So I don't know. I think everyone's feeling the same. Like it just feels a little bit bleh. So yeah, that is pretty much where I'm at. And it's going to be like, I just feel like 
A, I'm really lucky to be able to do this. Like, I have zero commitments. This job allows me to work from anywhere in the world. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And just, this might be the last time I have no zero commitments to anything. So I'm just going to go on my own and do it. Like, why the F not? Like, I've lived on my own in London. Why not live in Paris and New York? I have friends in both cities. So, like, I'm not going to be entirely alone. So, like, I'm just going to which just me and you we, we can go together see what happens <laughs> it might go wrong it might go good I, i've lived in beirut before i've lived in Cannes before i've lived in america before so no different really i just feel like going on an adventure and i don't know is anyone else feeling like this after the pandemic i just need to go on a massive adventure life adventure and like come back again so yeah um what am I doing today? I'm actually going to film, I'm going to do more vlogs with you guys. I'm going to film some stuff for a video that's coming up. Um, I think you're really going to like it. And then Georgia's coming back and we are, Georgia's still with me. She has the flats to a new place so hopefully she's moving sometime this week. But yeah, that was a little catch up. <laughs> oh my god. Georgia's back. <laughs> I have just finished filming today. I um, shot a shoe haul, so I'll leave it linked here if um, you haven't seen it already. But what are we doing this evening? We're gonna, well, we're just about to have a cup of tea and an Easter egg. Georgia's just got these. <laughs> she can stay longer. <laughs> um, and then we've been away from each other for what? Three days? Yeah. There's a new movie on at the cinema. Oh, we can do some of that. It was one with Bradley Cooper and Kate Blanchett on. There's also one called like 355 or something, and it's about um, women from each country coming together. Oh, that sounds good. I it looks see, really I good. I think that was on the Putney Ogeon. Oh, well, we can have a look, see what it's saying. Because we've not done Cinema Trip in a while. We have not. We love Cinema Trip. We do. <laughs> <laughs> right, kettle on. Kettle on. Um, guys, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm eating right now. I actually wanted to tell you whilst I'm here, I started taking, why am I yellow? Whilst I'm here, I wanted to tell you about the vitamins I started taking. So I was really um, deficient in vitamin D. I found out after tests with how bad I had COVID and stuff. So I had a really low vitamin D tablets. Um, D vitamin D deficiency so I got on a booster and my hair my skin everything just seems so much better so I was like if that is how much can change in a vitamin I was like, I really want to do more supplements so I thought I'd share with you what I'm taking so I've got my vitamin D I'll link these down there I've got them from Amazon and I take multivitamins and iron tablets and then I started taking oh there's another one somewhere so I started taking biotin which I'll honestly, I think this is the core reason. My hair, if I, I've got so much baby hair around my hairline. Like if I go like this, it's like all baby hair. Like just from taking this. And then for my skin, I started taking, gone yellow like a Simpson again, and gone. And then I started taking collagen and hydroclonic acid. And honestly, I feel like the difference in my skin and hair, my nails, everything seems so much better. So much better. My skin feels firmer, plumper, I don't know. So I just thought I'd bring you onto that. But as well as the hair on my head growing, the hair grows at a rate everywhere else. TMI, I know, but it leads me on to the next bit. So to control the hair growth, I want to introduce you to what, I'm a massive advocate of laser hair removal. Um, I've always done it at home. It's something I picked up during lockdown. So I wanted to introduce you to the next little gadget of mine that is helping me maintain <laughs> the new hair growth. I'm not joking, literally. I will shave and then the next day, it's like back with a vengeance. But it's a good thing for the hair on my head, not so much for a good thing for my for the southern regions. <laughs> TMI, really TMI on this channel. So guys, I wanna do a little bit of a shout out for laser hair removal, cause this is something that I really discovered in lockdown. Um, I have started doing laser hair removal at home. I find it really quick and simple. So let me introduce you to a brand called You Like. Now, what I loved about this brand is that if you've never done hair removal before, that you probably won't know that it, it's like really hot on your skin. It's laser. It's almost like a burn. Um, so this brand, You Like, of hair removal laser, 
which you can do in your own home, has a cooling technology. And I think it's painted it, so I believe that's that's not out there. This is the only one. Um, so let me show you the device. It's actually really sleek. Would make an amazing Christmas present because it comes in this beautiful leather like pouch. But this is as if that's what laser hair removal looks like these days. So this is the gadget. You know guys, I love a gadget. This is the charger here and it actually comes with these really cool glasses because obviously you have to protect your eyes with laser hair but I love the fact that they like fold it up. And then it comes with a razor as well because you actually, the best thing about laser hair removal is that you need Unlike waxing where you need to grow your hair, you can do it on completely, it's actually recommended that you're clean shaven to do laser, which means no like in between time. So a laser hair is so simple to do at home. You whack your glasses on and literally all you do is press it against the skin. I'll do a little tutorial for you now. So if you want to pick one of these up, I'll leave it linked in the description box below. It's actually super easy. They sell on Amazon, so so simple. And um, yeah, just thought I'd mention it. I love the color green as well. So lots of you were asking about COVID and what it was like the two different times that I had it. So obviously the first one, if you guys were here, it's a video on my channel. <laughs> I got it super bad. It was a really weird illness. This one was so fine. Like, I don't know if it was cause I'd been double vaxxed or because I've had it before, like a COVID before. I don't know, but it, to me, this COVID was really mild. I, it was just like a very strong cold for like a week and then I had one day where I couldn't get out of bed but apart from that like I was cleaning the house still like I really wasn't affected the first COVID I had was on a whole different level like that was so weird the first COVID I generally thought I might die <laughs> like it was horrific so the two for me weren't really in comparison I don't know whether COVID has just got diluted the more people have got it and it's a weaker strain but um, there was definitely a huge difference for me between the first and second one. The, the one that I've just had is not worth worrying about. The first one was worth worrying about. Like, if I'd have had any underlying conditions in the first one, I for sure would have been screwed. So for me, that was the difference. But um, yeah, Georgia was with me when I had COVID. She didn't catch it at all. So like, I don't know, it just depends. I like sniff COVID and get it. <laughs> so I guess it did, it's like the look of the drawer, isn't it? Someone also asked me, this was an Instagram question actually, I put a little box up and was like, what do you want to see on my YouTube channel? And someone said, more about your decision to stay single and the benefits of single life. <laughs> it's not a decision of mine to stay single. However, um, I talk about this a lot with my friends. I obviously I'm turning 34 soon and I'm single. <laughs> I... <sighs> I had, with all the way through my 20s and my teens, I was a very monotonous boyfriend person. Like I always, ha I've had a lot of long-term relationships. And when I hit my late 20s, 30, like I just, every single, not every single one of them, but the majority of my long-term relationships made me miserable. Um, I think I'm someone in a relationship that takes on a lot of the other person's emotions so if the other person isn't very mentally stable or strong really struggle in a relationship um so i learned like i was just i've just been so much happier by myself so i tend not to get into relationships willy-nilly <laughs> love that word um because it has a lot it's a lot for me to be like it's so draining for me to be in them if it's the wrong person um I think the pandemic's made me really not date much at all. I've been one of those people that really didn't bother in the pandemic. Like, I didn't really know how to master it. Like, I wasn't keen on going for, on a park date in the cold British weather. <laughs> and I also didn't want people to just go around to someone's house straight away. So I found pandemic dating life quite difficult. Saying that, um, I know it seems on my YouTube channel that I'm really, really single. There has been men, especially this year, like, there has been people in my life, like there was a trip that I went on and I took you guys with, with you that was with a, a guy. Like there has been people here, um, I just haven't shown it. So it's I feel a bit like, <laughs> you know, when you've got kids and um, you want to introduce them to a new partner, you don't want to introduce someone unless it's going to be long term. That's how I feel about my YouTube channel. So unless they're a really serious boyfriend, I would never introduce you to them. Um, I don't know, I just like to keep it private until it's like 
more of a permanent situation and for me they've just not they've just not been very permanent i am um, i don't know i just <laughs> yeah it's not a decision to stay single however i am very happy single i don't rely on like i don't ever crave like male attention or like want to crave someone i'm very very content being by myself which is probably not a good thing <laughs> when you're trying to again <laughs> i need to sort it out but um yeah i think being like there's so much pressure in society to be in a relationship and have kids and settle down and i don't know i just find um it can also make you very miserable if it's the wrong person so i would never jump into a relationship with the wrong person just so i can fulfill society's need for me to have kids and settle down but i'm a great believer that timing is everything and everything will just pan out the way it's meant to so my person will come when he's meant to come i also believe like you're meant to become the person like I have to become the woman that I'm meant to be before I can attract the man I'm meant to have and I feel like I've grown so much this past years that I if I'd have date if I was still with someone that I was four years ago right at the start of my YouTube channel like I've grown so much as a person and become stronger and more independent and just grown in every single way that I don't know if I'd have dated someone back then I would have been the same person now so I always believe that timing don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna see if George is ready. I'm just rambling. <laughs> I really. <laughs> Shall I tell them what happened? I was gonna say, did you them no, I didn't. So the flat is looking like this because bomb, bit of a bomb side because I spilled beetroot juice all over this couch, and bright purple, strong red beetroot juice, and it was like everywhere, and it's come it's come off to be fair so if you want it in like a child resistant couch i feel like this is the one it's from sofa club cannot believe it i mean i can't believe it i can't believe it yeah. but this this is the beetroot juice <laughs> accident <-pro> <laughs> laura help what is going on? help me so this is the color that was on the couch like that's how horrific the stain was and it came out we're just currently in the nerd we just popped in for some food we had chicken Caesar salad <laughs> it's really bright <laughs> we got a georgia look how beautiful this place is though oh, so oh look how beautiful she is <laughs> but yeah i'm repping louis vuitton we've got so much louis vuitton going on my new favorite brand not my new favorite but we like we like louis vuitton do you remember the days when i didn't like louis vuitton yeah. Look at me now. <laughs> Guys, I've had a very exciting parcel. So this was on the new Sex in the City. I spotted it last week. One of the girls had it on the table. It is a handbag from L'Envon. How do you pronounce L'Envon? L'Envon. L'Envon. I butcher every accent I want in I'm gonna learn French soon. Mm. I'm quite good at French, guys. I just, you are. You're um, good. So I don't think it would take much to make me like really good at it. L'envoi. L'envoi. Scouse way is London. Yeah. <laughs> AI got me London. How fabulous is that bag? Imagine that with just like a white oversized shirt. Very you. Stilettos. I enjoy it a lot. Good morning guys. It is Sunday today. I've had a... I can't remember the last time I spoke to you guys. I've had a good weekend. I've been out. <laughs> Didn't vlog much. I'll put one of my outfits here. Um, but yeah, I just went out this weekend. I had a good, good weekend. I never do that. Um, so yeah, I just take a, a couple of days off to myself, but I have some new clothes um, that I wanted to share with you and see what you think and whether we should keep them or not. So I thought that's what we would do today. Also next on the agenda today, I'm gonna start organizing the flat to put into storage and I'm gonna put a load of stuff on eBloggers. So anything you've seen on my channels or my wardrobe, I'm gonna be getting rid of so much stuff. So head to eBloggers. It won't be obviously on there straight away, but like in a couple of weeks time, keep an eye out. So yeah, things are getting real. I think I have three weeks left in this flat. 
so yeah it's gonna be fun um I don't know whether I've explained it properly and I don't want to say too much because these things change and like move around I haven't booked anything because Obviously because of the pandemic, I can't book like a month's stay in Paris and then shit, the shit show happens again. So I'm just going to do it as it comes up. So I've just penciled things in. The idea is basically I'm going to leave my main wardrobe in my old, who remembers right at the start of this channel, my bedroom in my mum and dad's house. Um, I have a walk-in closet there. So I'm just going to put the stuff that I need there and use it as like a to change my closet over for when I leave again. I didn't think I've asked my mom and dad this. I'm just doing it. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn up and be like, hello. <laughs> but that's the idea. So I'm gonna take this, put everything into storage that I don't really use and keep the things that I do use in my closet at my mom and dad's house. So when I come back from the places, I can kind of repack and then go again. This is the idea anyway. So I'm gonna come back from Mexico, go home again, and then head to Paris. Stay in Paris for I think six weeks maybe is the idea and then come back again and then head to New York and then hopefully by the summer I'll be in a fresh frame of mind to get into a lovely flat again in London with a roof terrace in the centre and yeah I think it's gonna this is this is the plan I just need to get out for a little while I feel like everyone is feeling that way in the pandemic and I it's such a perfect opportunity for me to do it so I'm doing it alone um, George is coming with me to Mexico, but the Paris New York trip. I have my friend, I've got a couple of friends in Paris. Sai, who you know, you guys know before, he's been on this channel, is in Paris, he's French. Um, so he's going to be my translator. <laughs> I actually, je parle un petit peu de français, so I'm going to try and learn a little bit more when I'm out there. But um, yeah, it's going to be scary, exciting, and fun. I've done it before. I lived in Beirut, I lived in Cannes, lived in lived in loads of places by myself like just left and gone by myself so yeah and today I am going to show you some of the outfits I've done I had, had a habit over lockdown of like ordering en masse and then sending stuff back that I instead of going to the shops it tends to be like I order a lot and send stuff back I think we all got into the habit of that so I tend to order a lot and don't even show you guys but I thought today I'd show you them and like my idea behind it and see what they look like on so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. This is my new in rail. This is a H&M haul. So that's coming up. Today I have a pair of trousers from Cara Millen. I've really started to enjoy a lat la, 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 <laughs> a wide leg trouser, um, especially for dinner or like an evening out or something. I love this kind of look. Um, it's just so sophisticated and gorgeous. I'm kind of blending into the wall, but the silhouette of this. The trousers are from Cara Millen. I actually got a black pair too to try on, but they came, they sent me a different size than what I ordered. So unfortunately they do not fit, but you can hopefully see what it looks like in white here. But this is definitely gonna be my spring vibe, like a sophisticated, womanly. <laughs> it's a whole new era of dressing. I wanna be smart. I wanna look like I mean business. Okay, so this is the black version. You're gonna have to picture that these trousers fit because they are a size 16 um so i've just got them held at the back so they would come in a lot smaller if i got my size i really love again this silhouette you can probably see it a little bit better because of the black but um yeah why well, they're just so huge <laughs> um definitely gonna reorder in my size i think though so i just wanted to share that with you okay so this is a michael kors jacket i've just paired it with a cable knit underneath it I love this look. It's a very warm and chic at the same time. I've just got, I call these my Louis Vuitton boots, but they're not the Louis, they're from Zara. <laughs> they just really go with my Louis Vuitton handbags. They've got like the same brown and tan match. So this is a double-sided Louis Vuitton. Loving it. How beautiful. But um, I've got the Ralph Lauren sunglasses to go with it. The knit is from Marks and Spencers. I love a Marks and Spencers knit. And the jeans are from Primark. So next is this big gorgeous cable knit. I had this in pink and it was one of my favourite knits. And it was from a really affordable brand. 
I'm not going to tell you the price, but guys, go check it out. You'll be so surprised. I'll leave it linked down below. It comes, I've got a black one to show you as well, but they do all colours. It just looks a really chunky oversized knit. You could wear it as like a jumper dress as well, but I've just paired it with some over the knee boots. As always, gonna add some accessories. And this is how, this is a very me outfit. This is something that I would wear very comfortably. Next up, I have the black version, the black cable knit. I don't know if you can see. Come on, focus. It's got the cable knit running through it again. So it's really beautifully, it's just such a chunky knit. And then I've got cream jeans, black boots with them with them from Zara. Prada bag, Dior sunglasses, and this is just such, I've just took this one under to make it more of a jumper, but you can pull it down and it's like dress length. So definitely a really easy look to put together. Like I click down below, you will not believe where I got this jumper from. So this is a black shirt, but what I loved about it, I'm gonna take the belt off and show you in a minute, is that it pinches in around the waist. So if you do wanna pop a belt around, it doesn't have excess fabric. So it's kind of the shape already. So even without a belt, you get a gorgeous silhouette. I loved the loose fitting sleeves, like the long sleeves. It was just a really, really flattering um, kind of shape. So let me show you it without the belt so you can see. So this is the shape of it without the belt. So you can see it's got like the, the scrunch detailing down the sides to nip it in. So if you do pop a belt round, you don't get, there's no bulging or anything like that. So I really enjoyed the shape of this. Okay, so this is the white version. And obviously again, it lends itself to nipping in the waist with a belt, which I obviously always do. We've got Kristen Dior belt, Burberry scarf, Fendi bag, and some Zara boots. Um, the jeans are from Everlane. I have to mention, if you want jeans, Ever my Everlane jeans are my favorite in my wardrobe. But the, yeah, this is the look, and I kind of like the layering with the scarf. I think scarfs come in so handy this time of year, just to like play around with a plain shirt. Okay, I know some of you guys are gonna love this blouse. This is like, kind of, is it sheer? It's like, anglaise. Is that the right word? Something anglaise. Broderie anglaise? Yeah, but like black. So it's got a cami underneath it, but look how beautiful this detailing is. Just paired it with some Holland Cooper trousers because I kind of like when it's a blouse on, like a puffy blouse on top to have like more of a loose trouser on the bottom, Yves Saint Laurent. And I wanted to show you these shoes because they're from Dorothy Perkins. And if you don't know already, Dorothy Perkins does some great shoes, honestly, trust me. And they're super affordable as well, but this is beautiful. This would even work really well with flats, like a flat pair of boots. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we have, since I last saw you, we've just shot some, we were saying it's our first shoot day back. God, was it a struggle? Yeah, I don't know why, like, we I obviously- got how to do the job. I probably haven't shot since like, the beginning of December and that was a half hearted job because I was Omicron up at the time. Yeah. Looking back at those videos I put on when I had Omicron, just the day before I tested positive, I look positively disgustingly ill, but like with a shit ton of makeup on to hide it, no one else from to tell that I could uh, cut about breath. We are off to, oh, the bell. We've just shot with great difficulty. We'll put the I'll put the videos here. So yeah, we'll see what you think. I'm not sure. Not sure what's going on. <laughs> I forgot how to do it. Oh, it's hard work. But we found it so difficult to get back into the swing of things. Like it's the first time we've probably not posted on Instagram in two weeks but since forever. Um, but we just finished shooting and we're heading to this the cafe that I've been to before on this vlog. So we're gonna have a little bit of food and get out the house. Love. What would you love, darling? <laughs> a toasty. They might do toasty. That's what I was thinking. Oh, a cheese and ham toasty. It's me and Laura. Me and Laura had a cheese and ham toasty every day when we went to Vienna. Vienna. <laughs> I went on. Um, I was with a man recently on a date. I ordered a cheese and ham toasty, and he was like, <laughs> "Oh, we'll that out. recently." <laughs> to be fair, it was recent for you. <laughs> I thought I'd been with you for the last hour and a half. It was like, what, four months ago? Yeah. <laughs> that that really sums up my love life. <laughs> um, I ordered cheese and I'm toasty and he was not, not, not happy, but he was like, is that what you're ordering? I was like, yeah, yeah. you cannot be a cheese and ham toasty. Day, you literally cannot be Look how cute this is. I actually have a toasty maker. I want to move here. It's like a pink little cottage. Are you moving near me? Yeah. 
George has found a new flat, haven't you? Yay! So Laura might be homeless, but it's fine because we're going to swap. Yeah, I really might be homeless. Um, no, you won't. You've got five weeks. Oh, my arms are in because of the. Um, I can't lift it up. What are the chances Paris is the only place that we can't go? I reckon it might lift. I've got five weeks for it to lift. Yeah, true. So my plan is to go to, like, I'm 90% going to Paris. Look how cute this cottage It's like Hansel and Gretel's cottage. Yeah, it's so cute. Like, 100%, I'm going to go to Paris and New York if I can. If Paris keeps its borders shut, this is where it gets tricky. I'll be at yours. New York. <laughs> yeah, New York's a bit expensive though for four yeah. months. It's bloody expensive, New York. I'm gonna stop vlogging my arms in. This is our little setup. Got some snacks. S snack queen. <laughs> so back here again. You. Good morning, campers. It is a very frosty, bright little morning. We are in tow. What are we doing today? We're shooting our first shoot. We are doing our first shoot of 2022 and we're feeling very productive, aren't we? We are, we're ready to go. I had a late start to the year, so um, we're getting back into the swing of things. It took so hard to get back in, but we're ready now. Just wanted to show you my skip, because obviously last time I spoke to you guys, starts the train. Last time I spoke to you guys, I'd been to see Dr. Ahmed, but my skin is feeling so much better. Am I glowing? You're glowing, <laughs> But like just the texture around my chin, it just feels like more plump. So definitely recommend that treatment for giving you like just a little boost. A refresh. Yeah, I feel like I've not felt this good in so long. Good. Because obviously I've been ill for so long, I just feel like blah. So if you need a little pick me up, I definitely recommend that. So yeah, this is the neck. I wanted to show you my new Jimmy Shoe sunglasses. They've got kind of like... I like them, they're cool. An eight, is it 18? Reminds you of the... Um, what's the one Ashton Kutcher's in? The film. The 70s show? That oh, kind I of vibe. Me neither, but like, the vibe. <laughs> we were just at Ralph Lauren in the little coffee shop. This is the situation. It's very cute. Look at us. How cute are we? We're so cute. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. I think I'm going to leave this vlog here guys, but I wanted to mention before we go um, If you guys remember I designed a bracelet. God, we were working on it years ago It took lo so long to like come together. It launched in September and so many of you have bought it which um, makes me so happy But um, it's currently in the sale so I thought I'd just give it a little mention because it's discounted So if you haven't seen it already, it is a beautiful bracelet I wear it all the time. I'll put some pictures here. You will have seen me wear it a lot It's like the only thing that bracelet I wear on my wrist but um it fits any wrist so any size I really wanted to create a bracelet that like any wrist size could handle because I know I found it difficult to get bracelets that fitted me so you can adjust it to fit you but on the inside it has a little quote it says time to rise and I love I feel really out of breath today <laughs> I love quotes or little meanings behind jewelry so my theory behind this was a bracelet that in like resembled like coming back from like rising from the ashes like your time to rise and especially after the pandemic and the two years that we've all had I wanted something to remind yourself to like go out there and kick ass and um, it has a little little sparkly bit in this in the middle but middle of it as well but yeah I'll leave a link down below and um yeah it's discounted so I thought I'd give it a little